Osmo reached $10 and crazy airdrops are taking place in the Cosmos ecosystem. These are today's topics and at the end of the episode, we will talk to Federico Kunze Kulma, the co-founder of FMOS, and we will talk about RegDrop, EVM chains in the Cosmos ecosystem and much, much more. So make sure to watch this episode to the very end. It happened, guys, believe it or not, but Osmo reached $10 a couple of days ago. Today is the 18th of January and still Osmo is sticking around $10. I think this is unbelievable. And so far, 2022 has been a successful year for us all cosmonauts. I mean, Osmo reached a new all-time high. Atom is pumping like crazy and also Iron performed exceptionally well throughout the last couple of weeks. So... Congratulations to us all. Anyway, there's also a sad part of the story because, of course, also the staking rewards for Osmo are decreasing at the moment. If we look back to the summer 2021, we were able to get like more than 200% APY on staking Osmo. Well, these times are obviously over, but you can still get around 90% APY when staking Osmo. But you get my point. The staking rewards are decreasing very, very rapidly. Um, but on the other hand, that's a good sign because more and more people want to buy Osmo and want to stake it. And I think that's a very healthy, healthy sign for the whole ecosystem. And yes, I remain bullish. I continue using Osmosis every, every, every single day. And yes, I'm, I stick to my opinion. This year will be the year of Cosmos and Osmosis. Speaking of money and crypto, let's talk about airdrops. And the first airdrop I want to highlight in today's episode is the Stargaze airdrop. It has been a while, but Stargaze announced its airdrop a couple of months ago. And now the time has finally come. We can claim our airdrop. And in case you do not know, Stargaze is an NFT project in the Cosmos ecosystem. And if you want to claim your airdrop or if you want to check if you're eligible for the airdrop at all, you can do so. You can find the link in the description below. I wish you the best luck. We all waited for it and now we have it. Certainty, guys. FMOS finally explained its tokenomics to its community in a Medium blog post. And this Medium blog post was super interesting because... 40% of the initial supply will be airdropped. You heard me right. 40% of the initial supply will be airdropped to all the Ethereum users, Bridge users, Cosmos users, and so on and so forth. So really, wow, 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 wow. This is going to be a massive airdrop. And this is another reason why I'm so pumped to talk to Federico today. Federico is the co-founder of FMOS, and I would say... Let's not waste any time and get this interview started. Okay, let's go. Federico, thank you so much for being on This Week in Cosmos. I'm super pumped to talk about FMOS today. So welcome to the show. Welcome. Uh, thank you so much for, uh, for the invite. And uh, yeah, excited to talk about FMOS today. Cool. Um, let's start this interview with an analogy that you made at Cosmoverse, which is that every chain in the Cosmos ecosystem is a virtual city and the Cosmos hub is basically the port city. Uh, could you explain this analogy a little bit more and, uh, and describe it to our listeners? Yeah, so the main, uh, the main analogy here is that uh, um, on Cosmos, each chain, it's its own server and chain in the sense that they have their own set of validators, they have their own governance that controls the entire community, that is controlled by the entire community. So they govern uh, the entire chain and uh, basically have to bootstrap their own security with the validators. And um, the Cosmos hub is usually like the shelling point of the Cosmos ecosystem, like Atom itself as a coin is like the go-to and it's driving a lot of value right now because well, it's where most of the airdrops are being allocated. Um, same with Osmosis right now because it's the first DEX, but in general, like uh, was Cosmos have the first one that gave the access to like applications to be connected via IBC? 
Um, the main, the main uh, missing piece that we thought uh, had to be built for this ecosystem was uh, how do we build uh, a tool, how do we build an application specific blockchain that also allows um, all the mindset that comes from directly from Ethereum to also enter this world of interconnected blockchains. And so we think Evmos is a perfect point of entry to the Cosmos ecosystem for all the Ethereum developers and Ethereum users because they'll have the same user experience that they currently have on, on Ethereum and other EVM chains and through different bridges. Uh, so like, no, we, we're currently gonna deploy Nomad and Connects and other bridges as well will follow up. Um, so through these bridges, uh, users can directly uh, transfer their EVM or ERC-20 tokens to Evmos, and then with our new ERC-20 module, they can convert those and transfer them to like Osmosis and other, uh, and other chains in the ecosystem. So it's really gonna be the point of entry of all these different uh, applications from the EVM. Yeah, that sounds uh, very interesting because at the end of the day, FMOS brings Ethereum to the Cosmos ecosystem in a very interesting way. So could we dive deeper here a little bit? So uh, why is this so important and um, how did this kick off? Yeah, so FMOS itself, um, you, it was born as Ethermint and for the ones that know about the uh, Ethereum, German project. It was a project incubated early on at uh, Tendermint, uh, the company. Um, so it started in October 2016, more, more like a research project. And the goal basically was how do we run an EVM uh, or yeah, an Ethereum with fast finality and also running proof of stake. And the experiment was successful, um, but the main problem that we saw is that it was always, always like kind of like a research project. It was never pushed to production by, by any of the teams that were working on it. So the project itself was forwarded from hand to hand, like passed like a button uh, without any like continuity or any team like allocating resources to building into building different partnerships or allocated allocating resources for business development and everything. Um, so that's when we came in uh, and took ownership of the project and uh, continue building the initial Ethermin library. And then we rebranded the project. We kept Ethermin just as a library for other applications to use it and have an EVM compatible uh, Cosmos chain, but uh, the main application that we're building, the main chain that we're building is going to be called Evmos, which stands for EVM and Cosmos. I'm, I'm super excited about Evmos in general because it basically brings the whole Ethereum ecosystem, which is still the biggest ecosystem uh, in crypto, to the Cosmos ecosystem. So this is very cool, but this also sounds very, very challenging. Uh, because it's a very large ecosystem. So could you could you uh, talk a little bit about the challenges that you were facing or affected by, or some of the hurdles uh, that we were affected by when bringing when it comes to bringing Ethereum basically to Cosmos? Yeah. So there are multiple challenges. I would say the first challenge is the user experience um, for users. So in Cosmos, we already have our own set of tools like Kepler, different explorers that handle Cosmos transactions, et cetera. But if you go to Etherscan, uh, you'll find a completely different format for blocks, completely different format for, uh, for transactions. And you, can, you also have to add the functionality to the explorers to kind of like inspect the contracts and inspect each of the internal transactions that a contract makes. So it all comes to how do we create a rich user experience for and developer user experience for everyone uh, so that we can 
combine these two ecosystems into a single like nice user experience. So uh, in a way that we are able to support both Ethereum transactions and Ethereum formatted uh, types like transaction blocks, etc., and also um, be able to inspect the smart contracts, etc. So that has been like the main challenge, uh, creating a nice user experience that combines Cosmos and Ethereum types. And then I guess the second major hurdle is to launch an EVM chain these days. It's not really like a tech, it's not as much as a technical um, engineering challenge, uh, but also a lot of it comes into like the business development. So how do we how do we make it so that developers and users want to use your EVM as opposed to other EVM chains? Um, or what's a unique value proposition that your EVM is bringing to the already existing variety of uh, EVM based chains? So those have been our main, uh, I would say, challenges and. We want to incorporate them by adding Ethereum signing uh, functionality to Kepler. So that's one big thing that we're going to announce soon um, that we're preparing for mainnet. So you'll be able to use a Kepler more or less like a MetaMask wallet. And the other big thing is like we're also incorporating uh, incentives uh, natively into the tokenomics. So adding incentives to the platform directly to incentivize uh, developers and users. This sounds uh, super interesting, especially the fact, um, in fact, that you want to incentivize people via the uh, tokenomics. And we will talk about the rec drop in a couple uh, of minutes. And also very interesting what you said um, with, uh, your, uh, with your idea behind Kepler and uh, MetaMask. Um, I remember you also talked about it at uh, Cosmoverse um, about this aspect. This was also very interesting as well. But I want to go a step back because we touched on the old history of uh, FMOS and Ethermint. So basically, FMOS, if you want to say it like this, is a very, very old project. Uh, it's from the early days, but uh, you rebranded in, uh, in September. And what I want to ask you is like, first of all, um, according to a blog post by your company, Tarsis, um, you were affected by um, by trademark problems. And uh, secondly, you mentioned that now Ethermint changed its philosophy. Um, Ethermint just serves as a library. So what does this mean? Yeah, so the main problem here was the, the company that owned the trademark was requesting a large amount of tokens to for the use of the name. Um, so, and because we didn't want to basically allow for for this and in the sense of i guess uh in a free rider work is like we were the ones maintaining it we were the ones like that basically reborn the entire project um and they took it from uh the library that we it was right now and we have now two live we're going to have two live chains using the ethermint library on production so um because we wanted to leverage it as uh sek modules and everything we decided to rerun the project and that was the main thing like uh kind of like the large amount of tokens that they requested and then the other part was um, for some people, and we did like some internal surveying here as for some people like uh, Ethermin was considered like a failed project in the sense that it took like it was 2021 and it still hadn't launched. Uh, so it took like more than four or five years to like take it to a production ready state. Uh, so for a lot of people was like, oh, this was never seriously considered something. Um, so because of those optics, uh, we decided also to rebrand. And the final thing was we wanted to increase the scope of the original project. Um, so 
initial Ethermin, as I mentioned, was like Ethereum on Tendermint plus proof of stake. Um, so we wanted to increase the scope, uh, basically deploy an EVM with, or an IBC enabled EVM chain that through the modularity of SDK modules allowed you to create way greater functionality than just deploying a simple EVM. And that's why we wanted to increase the scope of the project and thus the original idea or concept of an ether, like of Ethermint didn't make much sense because we wanted to dream break with Avmos, and that's why we rebranded. Yeah, it's super super nice. Sometimes it makes makes just sense to to rebrand and uh, reflect and think about where where the project is heading. And I think you you did a very good job with that. And one other interesting af uh, aspect of Avmos is that projects uh, can launch child chains and leverage the security of the FMOS hub, basically. Could you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, so the, the main thing here is that once, once FMOS um, implements your security, a lot of uh, applications would be able to um, deploy their own EVM and connect using the FMOS token as security. Um, the main challenges, as I mentioned, in building its own EVM chain are basically that you have to build every new connection from scratch. So it's not just deploying an EVM, uh, but it's also the partnership and all the suite of products and clients that you need to implement directly from scratch. So what we're thinking is besides offering the security and offering like IVC interoperability, there needs to be a clear value proposition for a hub uh, in the sense of like, why would a new chain become your child chain instead of being like deploying a completely new sovereign uh, chain that is not tied directly to the parent chain. Um, so that's why we're also thinking about building like a suite of, uh, a suite of products um, or a suite of, um, yeah, connections as well, so that the users or the, the applications that directly deploy as a child chain can also benefit from having like a single block explorer, uh, all the direct connection with all these applications so that they, have, they don't have to do this from scratch and just build their, as we call them, like EVM application specific chains. So like application, DeFi applications, that have an EVM for some specific functionality. Um, and they will need also an explorer and everything. So we want to partner with them in, in the sense of like offering the same, uh, like offering this suite as well. Um, so if anyone out there is like building an application and, wants to, and is considering building on Evmos, uh, we'll gladly talk with them and see how we can help them. Yeah, guys, you heard it here first. And uh, besides of that, I really want to highlight this because um, what you guys are doing, you create a lot of value and more opportunities uh, for these projects. So, so far, there was only the opportunity to basically take advantage of the Cosmos SDK, launch your own chain. And now you are creating even multiple more opportunities. So this is pretty cool. And you also um, help these projects uh, with an existing infrastructure that you guys had to build from scratch. And uh, now I want to touch another interesting aspect of FMOS. It's that non-EVM chains can get exposure to actually native Ethereum projects. So for example, if Aave design, uh, decides to launch an FMOS, other non-EVM chains, let's say region, uh, can reach these smart contracts that are deployed on FMOS. And this could be like a gigantic value driver, in my opinion, for the whole Cosmos ecosystem, because uh, all these non-EVM chains get more exposure. So could you tell us more about this and highlight the importance of this concept and um, yeah, how this thing developed? Yeah, so the main, the main goal here is to uh, enable all these other chains to horizontal scale with the EVM. So, um, and enable interchain composability. What I mean by this is you, if you wanna build on a specific functionality, you don't need to build it directly on top of your chain and you can deploy, simply deploy a smart contract. 
to test uh, or in, like build your application or DeFi application directly. <clears throat> uh, so you deploy your smart contract and suite of products on Atmos, and then through IVC directly communicate with the smart contract and so that your chain can execute application specific functionality. Um, what this will enable is not only like chains to scale, but also building completely new use cases. So for example, Sommelier is one product, uh, one project that uh, interacts directly with Uniswap with three on Ethereum to do liquidity management. So for example, if there, we had an, a DEX or an AMM directly deployed on Evmos, they could do that instead by sending a, an IVC transfer, uh, an IVC transaction and directly communicate with a smart contract that is deployed on Evmos and execute the liquidity managing and rebalancing the LPs as well directly on their chain. Why is this better than the existing approach of using a bridge like Gravity Bridge? Is that the latency is way, uh, way lower. So an IVC transfer would take less seconds or like less, yeah, less time than executing a full <clears throat> transfer directly to Ethereum and back. And then the other thing is like saving uh, on fees. So the users from the from these applications would save a lot of fees um, by sending IVC transfers uh, transactions directly to Evmos to communicate. So it's uh it's better for like these different application specific use cases, and it's better also for the end user that wants to leverage, for example, these positions. And this is a like really concrete use cases uh, use case. Um, because of because we have a fully uh, equivalent EVM, uh, many use cases can be built on top. Uh, so, for example, Region is also considering uh, deploying their eco credits directly, or issuing or interacting their, with their eco credits directly with our EVM. Uh, there are multiple options here, so uh, it's up to the developers themselves to build interesting use cases that will be enabled through this functionality. Awesome. Now, at the end of this interview, I want to highlight uh, probably the most interesting topic for our listeners, which is the rec drop. And I think uh, this personally excites me very much because it basically rewards uh, both Cosmos users and Ethereum users. And in my opinion, this could bring a lot of new Ethereum users to the Cosmos ecosystem. And could you talk a little bit more about that, like the, some of the airdrop eligibilities and also highlight the philosophy behind, behind the airdrop? Yeah, so the rec drop itself, um, the core concept is on Ethereum, a lot of users are getting wrecked because of high fees. Um, there's also like a series of hacks and smart contracts in different smart contracts through security vulnerabilities. And there are also a massive amount of MEV usage that um, is basically preventing users to use with ease the different AMMs and DeFi um, applications. And because of this, we wanted to leverage, implement the first gas drop. Um, so the gas job is tackling the first part, which is like all these high fees. So like we're um, basically querying the entire Ethereum blockchain uh, for gas usage on a number of applications that are deployed there. So basically you will be rewarded uh, proportionally with the amount of gas that you spend on these different applications. And um, We'll be filtering, of course, like smart contract addresses and all that, but uh, that's kind of like the core component of the gas drop, of uh, which is tackling like all of the gas used in Ethereum. And then uh, that's kind of like the Ethereum component. Then we have uh, the Cosmos users in general, like it's tackling mostly Osmosis LPs and Cosmos hub stakers. Um, and osmosis uh, and ion holders as well. So for osmosis LPs, we're 
tackling uh, the eligibility is for Akash uh, LPs, Osmo LPs, Adam LPs, and as I mentioned before, Osmo holders and uh, ion holders, and also Osmo stakers. And then on the Cosmos Hub, on the other side, we are rewarding um, we're rewarding like IV, uh, sorry, uh, Cosmos uh, Atom stakers as well. And yeah, that's those are like kind of like the two main components like Cosmos and Ethereum. And because we also wanted to give back to the community of developers that basically make Cosmos possible, um, we also wanted to give back uh, through early to early contributors, uh, developers and members of the community that made the Cosmos Hub, sorry, the Cosmos SDK, Tendermint, even Go Ethereum, like an Ethermint possible. So we're also allocating a portion of the tokens directly to them. So yeah, that's kind of like the eligibility for the Red Cup. Yeah, I also really love how you also reward uh, users of bridges uh, like XDAI. It's like, um, Whenever you you did something in Ethereum or in Cosmos and you were early, you get rewarded for it. And uh, really, really excited about it. And I loved uh, also the meme rec drop uh, because uh, we spent a lot of gas fees in the past couple of months. So it's kind of cool to get like kind of a compensation for it. But um, I mean, this is not, I guess that's not the only exciting thing that is going on on your side. So uh, could you give us some hints uh, of your roadmap? So what can we look forward to? Yeah, so uh, in terms of the roadmap right now, we're adding, we're tackling mostly um, IVC interoperability. For now, what we're doing right now prior to mainnet is like all the tokenomics work and uh, like ERC-20 functionality. So basically enabling like ERC-20s to be transferred from different chains and the tokenomics work that is currently in progress. Uh, yeah, that's prior to mainnet. Post mainnet, we'll be announcing like a full roadmap, but uh, most likely it's going to tackle like all the interoperability components like IVC directly connecting to smart contracts through uh, the IVC, which is a functionality which you connect IVC from a smart, a specific smart contract to another a specific smart contract in another chain. Um, also enabling, for example, IVC transfers to directly go to the EBM instead of like the user balance. So like uh, if you have your ERC-20 token, you can transfer like an Osmo to another, um, yeah, your Osmo directly to the EBM, uh, NFT interoperability with the EBM as well. We're discussing like many different options. Yeah, that sounds uh, super exciting. And I mean, many people are very excited about FMOS uh, in general. So many people ask themselves, what are good ways to get involved? Uh, what is a good way to engage with you uh, on social media? And what is a good way to engage with the rest of your community? So could you name us some possibilities here, please? Yeah, definitely uh, get in touch with us on Twitter. Uh, the username is fmos.org. And it's the same one for Telegram and for Evmo, for the Evmos Discord, which, where we have all our community of validators and also developers and, and users that want to get early into Evmos. Uh, feel free to also join our Discord. And, and yeah, we have the, all of those links are linked on the Evmos description on the bio on Twitter. So feel free to reach out to us and, and We'll get in touch with the members of the community so that you can get started. Yeah, guys, you heard it here first. And as always, you can find all the links in the description below. So make sure to check them out. And with that being said, Federico, it was such a pleasure to have you on. We got many interesting insights from FMOS. And I think we all are looking forward to your rec drop and all of the cool things that are on the road. Thank you, Yuri. Thank you, Fabian, for the interview. I'm looking forward uh, to meet you again this year in person. 
Hey YouTube, it's a pity, but this YouTube video is over. However, please make sure to stay tuned for the next one. And if you want Atom to pump, then I highly recommend to subscribe to this YouTube channel and give us a like in order to trigger the YouTube algorithm. And with that being said, I see you on Friday.